dun 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 Hey, what is up guys and welcome to MMQ number three. This time we'll be making a render that looks like a sketch based on a sketch that looks like a render. So this is the original sketch by Adi Charai. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And from that sketch we'll be making this render. So it's gonna be real quick, I hope you can follow along. But of course, if you've got any questions, post them in the comments below or post them something over on the 3D Pilot Facebook page. So without further ado, let's head into Blender. To start off this model, I import the original sketch and start defining the contours of my model in the Z and Y plane. This is just a, a flat plane, but it's very important to think about its topology. So that's the way you arrange your triangles and your squares to uh, define the way the edge flow will work in your final model. Now the next step is to extrude this outline in 3D and make it a 3D model. And I'm also using a mirror modifier as my uh, model will be perfectly symmetrical on both sides. As I'm doing sub-D modeling, I add a subdivision surface uh, modifier and start adding uh, creases to my model. So that's all the sharp lines that will be in our model. Uh, now in the eventual model, there is no thing, uh, no such thing as a perfectly sharp edge, but it's a good way to uh, visualize those edges that will be there uh, easily and, and be able to adjust them later on. And this adjusting is very important. Uh, sometimes people use, for example, supportive loops. You can look that up. Uh, supportive edge loop, but that creates a lot of geometry and becomes really hard to to still change later on uh, in your model. So I like to use crease edges uh, and just pull around on the vertices until my model looks smooth and until I've got the desired edge flow. Now I had a bit of difficulty uh, around the handle and around the front part as well, where the sock comes out of the of the model. It was quite hard to define the edge flow because you want to have really smooth surfaces to run from one surface to another really smoothly. But basically it's just a matter of trying things, tugging around vertices, uh, readjusting topology, deleting faces and creating them over again in a different way until you've got that desired edge flow, that desired smoothness. I continued with the saw blade, which is just made up of flat faces, so I didn't have to use subdivision modeling. Um, and that's just basically made out of a plane and then added some extra detail and just left that as is for a moment. Now you'll see me going back and forth between parts. Uh, and that's a good way to keep your mind fresh and keep uh, having different perspectives on your model because if you work on a single part too long you just stare at it and, and get blind basically you don't really see how you should continue anymore so it's a good idea to just move on to another part and then come back to that later now the teeth are just a bunch of edge loops and I selected every other edge loop using the checker deselect tool which is great for alternating but repetitive detail so basically I just go back and forth between the saw blades and the handle and the little point at the, at the tip and just adjust the edge flow until the model looks smooth where I want it, rugged when I want it. Uh, it was a little bit tough to do sometimes. I had to figure out a couple of rough places. But I think in the end it looked quite fine and well, I didn't want to lose myself in detail as well because I'm going to be doing a couple of renders from far away. This isn't a technical model that should be uh, made in, in, in real life, it's just a model that is made to re represent how a shape could look. So don't get lost in the detail really. Next thing I did was go back to all of the creased edges that I made uh, and just replaced all creases with uh, bevels. Well, I forgot to do it on some edges, but using bevels is a more realistic way to make your model appear uh, more realistic as there are no 100% sharp edges in the real world, uh, as I explained in one of my last videos. Now I went back to the little part at the front a uh, little block thing you can see me working on here. Uh, I spent a lot of time on that, uh, which is basically a waste. I should have just let it as it is, because you can spend a lot of time, uh, hours and hours, pondering about the same detail. But it's not about that detail. You, you can even fix those things in Photoshop if you want. Instead, you should be thinking about proportions and edge flows and how things uh, would be used by a user. And absolutely don't get lost in the detail. Next up I modeled a little cable, uh, well I tried this at first but it didn't really work out so I had to do this a couple of times until my model uh, looked a lot more natural. So I started with a, uh, a sphere as you can see here and then used that and that was apparently a bed and base mesh. So sometimes you have to do something and be critical about it and just try again if it doesn't work for you. So next up is materials. I think my model is, fi is finished so I select different parts of my mesh that should have different materials and just apply some really basic materials. 
I'm using an HDRI to uh, really quickly light my model and then just make some different materials with the principal shader, really simple materials uh, nothing too fancy, you can do really fancy materials if you want but I'm not really going for photorealism, I'm just going for a more of a more of a stylized look now for the handle, uh, as in the sketch I'm using a grid pattern that I applied on the handle um, with some simple bump map and some simple uh, simple shader setup to make it look as uh, the same as the sketch and I continued this on with the different materials and the background as well I just tried to replicate the sketch basically with the lights as well you can see me using some planes with an emission shader on it um, now one thing I like to do is add different colors to my planes and that's just to have a good look at what lamp is doing what so I, I turn my lamp to a very bright color and then just have a look where the highlights fall, where the shadows fall uh, from that specific lamp and then turn it back to white or uh, a near white color. Then I did some simple test renders uh, with just a couple of samples and a denoiser on uh, and had a look at things that could be changed like for example the saw blade was way too dark so I added a white plane that would be reflected by the saw to make that appear a little bit more um, the same as in the sketch. Now for my final render I'm using a 4K resolution which is basically the full HD uh, times 2 in every direction and I'm using 300 samples with the denoiser on. I also chose to have my uh, backplane transparent so I can add that in Photoshop and have a little bit more flexibility there. Now rendering took a little over 24 minutes which is quite long but of course I'm using a 4K resolution uh, 300 samples which is quite a lot but I wanted to have a, a higher quality so I can continue in Photoshop with, with a good render. You can always adjust some settings to have it uh, render at, for example, 100 samples, uh, which would be fine. But I had a little spare time, uh, my computer wasn't doing anything, so I thought I'd just leave it for a good render. And it's actually a concept that would be new if you come from SolidWorks, uh, is that you can basically control how long that a render will take, uh, depending on the samples, depending on the resolution, depending on the amount of light bounces. So basically it's in your control. If you've only got two minutes to render this out, I could do it. It would look maybe a little bit grainy, a little bit dirty, maybe the resolution would be quite as high. But it depends on the time that you have. So you can render this out really long, have it really good, or render it out a lot more quickly. There's no need to wait for hours and hours if you just want a quick render. So it's basically in your control and you have to think about it that way. Think about how long you have, how long you want it to render, and then just um, adjust the settings accordingly. And the next thing I did, uh, as I do most of the time, is take it into Photoshop and make a little background for it, adjust some colors, try some different things around, uh, add a little, a little bit of glow around some model, add the shadow as well, and just some, some basic visual interest. Uh, as an homage to the, to the original sketch, I used my tablet and drew some lines across to show the edge flow again and make the 3D model look a little bit like it was sketched. This is a good way to show that it's just a prototype. You don't have to take the shape exactly as it is. You still have to imagine uh, that it is still changeable. And this is a good thing because renders often look very definitive, very finished. And that's not always what you want. Sometimes you want to show render and just show this is one option. We can still change things about this. I wanted to make my image even more dynamic. So I added some, uh, some manual glow just using a, a soft brush. And then just finished up by adding the name of the person who made the original sketch and my, I, my own name as well. Because uh, just as you do with normal sketches, it's important to sign your renders. Definitely if you make some really good renders, it's important that you sign those because you don't want them to get stolen by someone um, pretending that they made it themselves. So all in all, uh, modeling, making the materials and rendering took me about 2 hours and 20 minutes, which is about the time you need to make a high quality sketch like the one you just saw. So you might be wondering, why the hell should I go to the effort of making a 3D model if I just can make a sketch? Well basically if you make a sketch you can't change much about it. You can edit it in Photoshop a little bit with the colors and the lighting if you want, but you can't do that much with it. If you've got a 3D model however, you can make as many renders as you like once you've got the model. You can zoom in on details, you can give it different looks, and if you want you can still things, change things. You can add some detail, change the proportions of your model, you can do a lot more with the 3D model than a sketch. Where you still spend about the same time modeling as you would making a sketch. 
So I only made one render, which is an orthogonal side view. But of course, you can make a lot more renders in different perspectives from a point of view, uh, at a hand, maybe added in some kind of environment, do whatever you want to do with it. You can go a lot further with the 3D model. So that's why, basically. So yeah, that'll be it for this video. I'll see you next week. By the way, if you've got a sketch that you would like to see as a 3D model uh, for an MMQ video, maybe you can definitely send that in. Uh, I'll have a look at it and maybe it will be in our next video. But up till then, I wish you the very best for this new year. And I wish you great exams, as many of us are uh, studying right now. And I'll see you soon. Bye.